Now this morning on the show, I'm joined by a human resource manager and a development economist. In the studio, to my immediate right is Mrs. Miriam Tintimat and Dr. Aliu Elias. Good morning to you. Welcome to the program. Good, Good morning. morning. Thank you for having us. It's a pleasure. Now, as we look at this topic, it's also important to state that uh, Mrs. Miriam here would be looking at inclusivity for class of persons who often are not people just group them would, would I say in hindsight that uh, mm -hmm. we don't really have that demographics but people complain about the exclusion when we look at the employability quotient in the current labor market so I believe that we should start with those group of persons mm -hmm. persons with disability now the challenges in the labor markets both in the organized or even the government's employment on I don't think that we have over time really looked at how this person's can be gainfully employed and even in upskilling are the technologies available to enhance their inclusivity okay thank you so much uh, for having me this morning uh, having inclusive workplace is a mandate uh, given by the federal government having a disability act in place and um, have a grace of five years and uh, which has elapsed this year so um the law mandated that every organization should have at least five percent of their um, job quota given to persons with disabilities but you can't just have persons with disability work for you when the workplace is not inclusive number one we have to start with having an um, accessible workplace ensure that um, persons on which can easily access their workplace they have to have um, devices that will help both the blind and the deaf to be able to you know put in their best at work we're looking at having a screen reader to help the blind to be able to access their computers and also you have to, um, sign language interpreters available to help the deaf to you know work effectively in the workplace so these are what we are looking for for you to have an inclusive workplace first in the workplace let's even come back a yeah. bit a little bit backward in terms of even the training process yeah. i know special schools around the country cater to braille and specific technologies needed for persons with visual disabilities that were visually impaired but well, we also have some other disabilities even in learning that need for such inclusion in persons who from their graduation because they're going to this schools to graduate to be able to become sure. em employable yeah. do you think that the disability act in that way can also provide for good catering and inclusion of such persons sure um it has mandated that you have to have that quota of five percent but for you to have it first you have to look at the barriers that could limit person disability to work effectively in your workplace. So one of the barriers I've mentioned and uh, physical barrier, then we're looking at attitudinal barrier. You have to have that mindset that these people they have potentials that have to be enhanced and they have to also meet their livelihood. So number one, you have to have a training or capacity training for your staffers on issue of um, attitudinal change, you know, then have disability preparedness to let them know that this workplace is an inclusive place. So their attitudes have to be very, very inclusive. So it's not um, a sympathetic environment, but it's mandated that it's going to be a right, their human right to be employed, to earn a living. So you start from there. Then secondly, you have to have the skill. Look at the department that they can function effectively for you to attach them in that particular department. Now, Dr. Mrs. Tim Tinat has beautifully established a background to this conversation. I'm very sure our viewers at home and I'm broadening their mind to look at it that upskilling to enhance uh, employability is not just from the angle of able bodied people. Inclusivity is key in these conversations. Now, coming into the current Nigerian labor market, where we have some graduates who will be more in the situation of having sat at home with degrees, beautifully documented, two ones, two twos, who are still not employed. Meanwhile, you find persons who are barely uh, with first school sets or secondary school leavers who have upskilled taking up the jobs where people with beautifully decorated CVs are unable to access. Right, it's quite uh, interesting. I think uh, first and foremost, I think we start, have to start from our education itself. Our education is not designed in a way that you come out of your school and you get a job. For instance, if you go to some climb, I, I have, my first degree is economics, but if you go to some climb now, you don't study economics, study computer economics. So by the time you are out of school, you can regress, you can check inflation, you can be on your own and do a lot of things. So there's a process that we also study in school that is giving us a, a setback in that area. Apart from that also, we've got a federal government that also makes sure that there is entrepreneur 
uh, study in every level of uh, institutional education, which is also helping. But I will also want to score federal governments for introduction, but I'll score them low for not being consistent in terms of uh, policy, so and so. Look at uh, NPower. What does NPower actually came to do? It came to upskill youths of Nigeria. How? We have NTeach. So you'll be attached to a teacher that is teaching already so that you can upgrade your skill. We have NTech. You'll be attached to a technology environment so that you know more about technology. We have NTAX that will em enable you to also understand taxation and from there you become a practitioner. So there's a lot of design that is available. Our problem is policy somersault and inconsistency. You recall that if you even check most poverty reduction program, that's what is told, especially when it is designed for you because they want you to, to be employable. Uh, but our first, I can also tell you that at this age, your first degree, except you are from a professional called like medicine, even lawyer, you know, you have to do additional training. Like an expert here who knows about human resources. After your first degree, you may still have to go for you know human resources. They will still tell you that this is where you can actually do more. At this age, someone who does not go to four-world class to study in university, can free secondary school and go and do programming, uh, an IT related tech program. In three months, he earned much more. You know why? His employment is global. So he can be here and working for people in America. He can be here and working for people in Norway. So and that's why federal government to create employment in Nigeria must be intentional in upskilling people and reviewing our curriculum in school. Because our curriculum is designed for you to come out and be looking for a job. And more so, we are bringing down polytechnics, which is not correct. If you look at the design of polytechnics and universities, there are two different designs. A polytechnic person is meant to graduate as a technical person after grad. And that's why, if you see someone who, I sound to be correct, who graduated uh, from polytechnic with an engineering course, you can compare him. Because he goes for one year, you know, to do IT practical. So therein, he is much more equipped. But people that go to university are supposed to create a job. They are supposed to look for a job. So when you go to university, you have the management skill to create a job, get somebody from Polytechnic or that technical institution, and bring them together and start a business and start a factory. So an, an other business. So this is how it should work. Once the government go back to design this thing as supposed to be and create infrastructure because, you know, you can also not create job in a vacuum. So you must also create an available environment in terms of funding that should be accessibility to fund because I'm a graduate. You know, for someone like me, I, I run my business. So for me to run my business, I need to upskill. So when I upskill, I need a good environment to actually operate. So now governments cannot only be the one to create this employment. And that's why there is mentorship. So when you are graduating, you are being attached to a particular place. And that's why we must also review our NYC. Someone will finish, if you recall, even in NYC now, that's what is called Saeed. Yes, Saeed program. Saeed program. So what is Saeed program? Why you are serving, they expect you to also find a way to get a skill. So therein, when you finish your serving, you can use that skill to work. But are we adhering to all those things? So my advice to federal government, when I have opportunity to discuss with them, I say, okay, after NYC, why don't you tell this? as core member serving that if you graduated and you studied this your site very well use your nyse come and take a loan of one million and start your business or go back to your community tell your traditional ruler to be your guarantor then you assess so 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 and so amount and come and invest it in the what you have learned in said now, now this recommendation is coming at a very sensitive period where i feel one of the policy formulations as regards the student's loan scheme right. is still flexible to accommodate such recommendations. Right. Now, if you look at that, that's what we need to look at. Because if you sponsor somebody to graduate, that's the problem. After graduation, after service, what next? The person, until the person gets a job, before you start paying. So you must also design it that, okay, if you study engineering, okay, you must be attached to a particular, you know, engineering company, be it civil, be it technical, be it electrical, so that when you come, and you also go to social science, you study business, and, and that's where we even have problem. Go to university now, the highest people that are studying is business administration, public administration, and accountancy. Mm. My question now is that, if I'm studying business uh, administration, I believe it's vague. I should study business administration in technology. I will know how to do business around technology. 
business administration in agriculture and i also know that if i'm graduating i would like we are looking for youth to be in farm but if i'm trained as a business administrator in agricultural produce i will know how to market it how to create business around it how to maximize the value chain so it's a very humongous so that government must be intentional our nde and other uh institutions should make sure that they are intentional in creating enabling environment for people that go to other client in us in uk in china you must not go to university to actually have a skill they tell you that once you graduate at a particular level you go and do attachment somewhere you become a professional and that's why it is not even much more attractive for you to go to you know high institution because i believe at that level you can actually create they even believe that go and work and come back and upskill in that area so it's a very broaden thing that even nigerian can maintain because we are not even maximizing our youth we have about 65 percent nigerian youth how have we transformed that the only sector that is being transformed and is self-transformed is the tech the tech you know all of us now after my first year i believe that i must have tech and you know tech actually applied to every sector there's tech for agriculture there's tech for banking you know there's tech for industry there's tech for manufacturing so we must start to structure our people to that area tech in communication as well so these are the things we must because i think is government concern and we must start from our, our university okay someone who study physics I tell you, if you study physics in university, you end up being a teacher. But if you study physics electronics, as you are graduating, what happened? You move. Even come on for you can fix. You can fix some electronics. And so go to Ghana. People don't study physics. They study physics electronics so that when you come out, you know, you attach it to something. When you study biology, you don't study only biology, you know. We have to study it with something that will make you to be functional when you are graduating. So we should change our curriculum. Now, Dr. Aliu Elias has advocated for a rejigging of the Nigerian curriculum to ensure that there is upskilling from the point of graduation. Mrs. Miriam has also highlighted the need for inclusivity as a concerned person with disability. Now, whilst we look at Nigeria as largely youth populated, with 65% of our population largely agile, there's a need to broaden this conversation. We're hoping that if we have the right connection, we can also have the chairman, Nigerian Youth Organization, Abuja Chapter, Honorable Adedeji, Mike Adebayo, join us on the show. And of course, Mr. Chijokyo Kafo would also be back on the show this morning as we continue into the second half of this discourse. Remember, if you have contributions, you can drop them in the comments on our online platforms on Facebook, Instagram, and on X at ADBN underscore TV. We'll be right back to have a more expanded and robust discussion this morning. Please stay with us. It's the show and we're hoping that once we have connection, we can have Honorable Ayo Deji, Mike Adebayo, who is the chairman of Nigerian Youth Organization, Abuja Chapter. But very much in our studio this morning is Mrs. Miriam Tintinat. Now, now let's talk about it. Doctor has quite brilliantly outlined some rejigging needing to be done to upskill even from graduation level. Yeah. Now, some of the challenges with inclusion as well, is under this new brilliant idea of a student's loan program mm -hmm. now the challenge is after graduation we still return back to the markets but one thing i have seen that is particular about persons with disabilities there's a prioritization of skill a lot of them are very handy yeah, regardless definitely. of their disability is this another policy or design framework to ensure that they are upskilled even from the start Okay, I think what is paramount is the political will, first of all, of um, having persons with disabilities being mainstream in any policy that's being shot at by the government. So if they have that consciousness of having inclusivity, not just to tick the boss, but make sure that persons with disabilities are properly carried along to have a maximum livelihood, then they'll be conscious of it, making sure that a percentage is being set out of every revenue that they are setting for. You know, for the youth, make sure that persons with disability have their quota out of it and it's being maximized and they, and they have accurate um, access to their resources. Because persons with disabilities are more skilled in technical, technical um, arts. You know, when you come to a technical area, persons with disabilities stand out because they have less distractions. So when you come to the deaf persons, you know, when they are working, they have a small level of concentration in their work. When it comes to the blind, they have massive. If you see a blind hand doing computer, you'll be amazed. Even you that not have disability, you see the blind, they do most effect effectively when it comes to computer or IT. Yeah. 
they are more speed type. Yes. But how far along can a person with a disability function in a system where people without disabilities can easily function in? I mean, there has to be a certain threshold that they can't go beyond. Otherwise, it could be catastrophic. Don't you think so? No, th there's nothing like that. Well, uh, share your thoughts on this. Okay, because I I've been in that sector for over 10 years and I've worked with persons with disability. I would tell you that the energy level is even higher than we that have a lot of distractions. Because when you have a lot of distractions, it also affects your productivity. So to them, the level of concentration is higher and they have that energy to do it because they have that passion they believe that um a lot of people are discriminating disp against them because of that the they put, yes they are they go they go extra miles to ensure that they put in their best and their work their work output is excellent you can't compare it is always at the highest level when you are scoring them so i think they don't have any limitation when it comes to productivity but the question is are we willing to have them come on board do we have a space for them i will um our attitude is they accommodating for them to be able to work and maximize their arts especially in line of certain negative means that persons with disability are looked upon yeah a lot of discrimination coming along no? so, so how do we down downplay this discrimination for persons with disabilities people look at them and just feel this disability is a limitation well other than looking at it as differently gifted especially with maximum concentration as your butt rest awareness creation then the implementation of the disability act is another key because if you don't have knowledge of that disability act may not be able to effectively implement it the law say five percent and that five percent don't just be there to come and sit down in the workplace they must be productive and for them to be productive must make sure that that devices are available for them to be able to put in their best at all now now in other parts of the world i, I believe it's in somewhere in europe mm. uh or in, in in england particularly uh there is a certain uh, person with down syndrome who is serving as a representative in, uh, as a representative in one of the houses mm -hmm. there in uh, the uk do you see a replication of this happening in Nigeria? Seeing that the climb here is slightly different, can we have people with disabilities in the corridors of power or even in power in this country eventually? Currently, we do have some of them, but however, it's at minimum. Yeah, we have some persons with disabilities at the um, Senate. Well, I was also appointed to the president as an SS. Yes, yes, we do, but it is at minimum. At a minimal level. So, if we can fully implement the disability act, giving that five percent quota to every appointment at any, any leadership position, then I think we can have such number replicated in this country. Now, Doctor, let's come to you as well and yeah. have you shed more light on the conversations as we continue. Right, I, 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 I think it's a very good thing, but I, domestication is a major thing because if you look at it very well, it's not shouldn't be at the federal level only. I can say I've seen some some um, uh, governors, was it Cross River? Yes, I saw him giving opportunity to people with uh, uh, disability. But I think the if the skill, like she rightly said, I can mm -hmm. confirm to you that they are much more concentrated because there's less. And you could see all, some of them even with a uh, motorcycle, they try to construct it to the way they will benefit from. Yes. So some of them have been driven by an Uber driver with disability. Right, well. that's a good one. So we need to encourage them. Like she said, what we need more is advocacy. And the onus is all of us is on all of us because some of them does not actually choose that. And we that are also okay, things can also turn around. So Accidents. we must make sure we are conscious about it. Give them a living environment, the infrastructure they actually need, and also assist them in terms of uh, need. So I think it's much more uh, of advocacy that we should all engage on. Well, well, doctor, there is a particular stereotype that um, we all of where uh, most people think that people with disabilities are confined or some most people with disabilities are confined to beggarly activities begging by the roadside and all of that how can we change that narrative how can we wipe off that stereotype and how can we actively empower people with disabilities to fend for themselves right i think that narrative is quite correct and it affects particular uh, region of Nigeria more but I, all, what I think is that if you look at some of the uh, administration too they will go to the streets pack these people and make sure that they encourage them to actually learn then feed them but we must also be intentional about that people must be discouraged you know and how do you discourage them is to be gamefully to get them gamefully engaged 
in something that is quite uh, everybody want dignity in what he or she is doing but i think government should be conscious that there should be a particular law maybe they will amend the act that says that if you have this social disability this is an environment you can come to learn government is going to pay for your e learning process sponsor you for this period everybody wants to learn and have that uh, that courage you know there's a particular place in, Ab in abuja that is being designated for these people you know when people are ever talking about that place you see they are using sure. them because but i've gone there for advocacy save a time some, some of them are ready to actually do something some of them can even own a cosmetic shop some of them can even uh, be a pharmacist and other professions so it's not a big issue. I think we have uh, Honorable Ayo Deji Mike Adebayo joining us as well virtually this morning. Let's have for him to also uh, make his take on the topic of discourse. Good morning, G Honorable. Nice to have you join us on the program. Now, while, whilst we're still tr struggling to hear you, I believe you've been following the conversation upskilling to enhance employability. We've looked at it from the angles of inclusivity the necessary amendments to ensure that the disability act is followed to the latter but beyond yeah. which is a broad clamor for nigeria to upskill in light of the evolving knowledge and skill economy uh, let's get your take on this well um nigeria has been doing uh, li um, very little as a guess will um upskilling our youth to be employable like the NYC, from what I can, they have a program called the SAID that they help to train the uh, coppers on um, vocational skills and entrepreneurial skills, IT and all of that. But, um, you know, the problem with us in Nigeria is we tend to always put a lot of pressure on the government. And looking at a situation where individually we begin to go for training ourselves. For example, if you're in the, uh, maybe an ICANN or an NBA and all of that, there's always workshops and uh, seminars that you should attend that will help you improve on your uh, academic qualification. There's, for the IT guys, you can go into coding and all of that. I think what I want us to, what I encourage people to do is look out for programs. You know, online, we have a lot of programs that, uh, trainings and um, vocational skills that they offer. A lot of people just go online and they just cruise. And a lot of them, I'm talking about the youth now. They I'm go talking online. about the youth. This cruise is becoming yeah. a very common catchphrase. And okay. people talk about Nigerian youths being more drawn to dancing on TikTok. Uh, as yeah, uh, someone who has largely worked with youths in your position in head of the Abuja chapter, uh, are there some yeah. steps on grounds to re-engender or reorientate our youths towards focusing their priorities and getting them right? Yes, a lot, a lot is going on. Like uh, the last time I met the uh, Minister of Youths, is a vibrant youth, a Nigerian youth, and he's. He was talking about uh, providing a help desk for the youth, encouraging the youth to know how to uh, um, go about their problem. For example, because we are, he, he, he was of the opinion that we, uh, the youth have issues and they don't know where to take these issues to, or they have challenges and there's nobody to mentor them or teach them or direct them in the way to go. The, the youth are encouraged to look for, like now, there are a lot of scholarship programs online. A lot of scholarship that the government uh, provides. There's um, the money, uh, Federal Institute of Management in Nigeria. They offer entrepreneurial skills, training, and all of that. These are avenues that people can take advantage of. But when the information is not out there or the youth themselves are not interested, a lot is going down the way and they miss this opportunity. Well, well, Honorable, let's um, move away from uh, the issue of youth now for a little bit and still hammer on um, persons with disability. When okay. We hear of persons with disabilities. Most people just picture physical disabilities. But then there are people with mental disabilities. Uh, we have people with autism. We have people with Down syndrome. We have people with certain neurological diseases that do not allow them function properly or in the sense that we all know it normally. Uh, how do you think this set of people can be... Uh, properly infused into the society for them to take up tasks that normal people or people without disabilities um, you know can handle what modalities do you think can be put in place for this to happen well, when I was listening to the last speaker I had him talk about legislations and uh, laws to be put in place to help these people Let, let's be realistic here we are really as a country not really ready for these things and it's it's good when topics like this come up and awareness is created so that people like this, their issues will be looked into. 
there are private organizations and uh, government establishment that begins to develop avenues for people like because like, so a lot of people don't even know what autism is because if you look at our curricula in our schools nowadays we are still using old old uh, syllables and all of that so these are new development that needs to be brought into the system i really cannot go far solution myself because uh, uh, we have little knowledge of uh, problems like this we are not used to it when you like you rightly said when you talk of disability or people that are limited we look at people that have physical challenge leg eyes and all of that we are not used to mental issues in short um, a lot a lot of nigerians have these issues mental issues because um, the challenge we face every day is crazy but there are no places where we could go for uh, uh, uh how is it called for therapy and all of that so uh but if you ask me what can be done it has to do first with legislation and awareness creation then solutions can begin to provide thank you honorable we'll come back to doctor at this point doctor reference on the economy now with your core discipline in the economy we've looked at a time in the country when the indices we're looking at is quite disturbing and with the advice that even at the federal level there needs to be downsizing going to the Orosaya report there's also the challenge from the private sector in being able to keep up with whatever new wage is announced now this employ uh, employability we're discussing regardless of the skills at hand many are also looking at the advent of ai uh, some human jobs are now being replaced yeah. by technology in light of all these developments how does a prospective optimistic young person out there upskill in light of these challenges right right first and foremost you know the issue of minimum wage is a serious uh, challenge that we must look into because organized private sector may not be able to afford such amounts i mean i, I have people i actually employed by a career and, and interview for one yesterday he is 26 years and i'm looking at the amount to pay the problem or you know when you do what we call pen comp, if you are a business person you have to pay particular amount so if you are paying eighteen thousand naira uh, before i mean right you no know, you have to change it when, when they increase the salary now you have to also pay so an employer look at let me have one they have like three skills that i can use in the place of getting three i don't know if you get it now and, so, and it's done so multitasking exactly it will be one now maybe you study accounting you do the work of administrator you also do the work of marketing and one, hr at hr mm -hmm. and that's why nigerian youth must be very skillful for you to be employed so we won't employ it based on your first uh, degree you want to see other skills they actually have and ai has also come it's a it's a it's a positive negative externalities that we cannot actually reject it because ai is solving a lot of uh, problem but as an employer who wants to make profit trust me i want i have to reduce staff and maximize uh profit so i will look at a technology that actually solve the problem that three persons can solve uh, at the same time however it's also an opportunity but the major problem is that next 30 years we are going to have old society <laughs> how we are <laughs> challenge actually looking at that because no matter the skill you have now do you get next 30 it's going to be a different ball game all of us here still here will be like you know 60 70 you know and those people will have now will have choice of job but at this point in time we don't have choice that's why you see if i ask most nigerians are you actually doing what you study in school ask anybody you know i want to be a lawyer but i end up being an economist Somebody wants to be a pharmacist, end up being, you know, that does it. But you must start from that school, curriculum, counseling, before you even go to university. If you go to another line, you can't don't just go and study. Somebody would have sit around with you and look at is your area in engineering? Is it in this? Is it in that? But Nigerians just go to it's not your core strength. Well, well doctor, let's let's <laughs> look at the Jaqua syndrome. That right. Is ravaging, you know, especially the Nigerian uh, youth populace as it stands now uh you talked about ai you talked about digital skills and all but from records most nigerian youths who get trained in some of these um digital skills tend to feel like their skills will be more appreciated outside the shores of nigeria and then you see a the the adverse effect is a mass migration of skilled people skilled young people moving out of the country so they get trained here they put out they move out of the country and utilize their skills there yes. that is retrogressive if you ask right. what do you think well it's quite uh, pathetic that we have issue of brain drain it's even happened more in the uh, headset 
do you know it's quite very cheap to, to study any health uh, program in Nigeria? Medicine, pharmacies, you can't go to UK, even Ghana here and study medicine. But the challenge is that it's been eroded. People go abroad. The area, another area is that fintech. But I can tell you, if I can advise the youth, if you are a fintech or tech person, you are a global person. So sometimes you don't even need to go abroad. I can tell you, I have somebody, yes, as somebody who is my friend, he worked remotely from here and he made a whole lot of money and the money made more meaning as well here so the thing is government must also discourage us from traveling right but how do they discourage us is to give us enabling environment you must industrialize if you don't industrialize you know it's pretty difficult but if you look at last uh, indices from uh, uh nbs it shows that our uh what do you call it our manufacturing sector is not bringing more money our also our uh, industrial sector is not bringing it is service economy what does that shows that simply means that area you know is getting much more you know opportunity so i'll advise the youth you have to consider i wouldn't say don't jack bar but if you, if you jack bar and you also come back to reverse it's not bad because it's not not good go to global somebody can also jack bar from uh, england down to india if there is a business yes. you know so you must create that living environment for the, I think the major thing government should look at creates a living environment. Miss, Mrs. Miriam, yeah. now in light of all these developments, as a human resource manager, you know, they say the strength of any nation is based on its human capital and its development in line with getting Nigeria to where we can become economically competitive, that people would want to leave their countries and come over here. How do we better concert efforts towards human capital development? Okay, so one is building the capacity of the youth. Yes, so the youth have to also have the willing willingness to be able to increase their skills. You know, don't just be a citron, you have acquired your um, degree and that's enough for you. But like my coach said, you have to have two or three more skills to help you to compete effectively with others. Another thing is earnings. Our rewarding system has to be very encouraging. Because if it's not encouraging, like you said, Jack Bassington is there because everybody wants to live a, a very comfortable life. I don't want to have a skill that's not being valued or appreciated. Yes. So having that rewarding system will help us also to compete effectively. It's coming at a time when organized labor is charging this course. Let's get back to Honorable Ayo Deji Mike Adebayo, if he's still with us. And as we look to draw the conversations to a close in the next five minutes, uh, let's get your thoughts as well, Honorable Adebayo. As by the Jabba syndrome. Yes, please. Well, uh, I keep telling those who care so listen, right? The, like, uh, the last speaker there spoke, said, uh, if you're in the IT world, that means you're a global person. And so, well, uh, for the medical field, I think we have issues of enabling environment, like you also mentioned. A lot of my friends that were, that are doctors and have left, I want to ask them why. They keep saying the Nigerian um, medical field is not as favorable as, you, as it should be, but I think it is Nigerian problem can only be solved by Nigerians. I discourage people from leaving, but I still tell you, tell them if they feel that is the best for them, go they get the experience. If it pays you better, fine. But I think a lot of Nigeria eventually will begin to come back if they begin to see better opportunities in Nigeria and the environment, the uh, enabling environment is there. Like uh, the organized labor, for example, is always going on strike and then and, um, making our labor market so dangerous for people you know even the students in schools uh have spent more times more time in uh, more years than expected than necessary so it affects what i think we should do there should be a meeting point between the government and the uh, labor congress so that it begins to clear doubt and um, it helps to encourage people to want to work the IT guys, okay, like now we have a lot of, like if you see the content, for those that are into content creation and all of that, they can work from anywhere and they're not even interested in living because they are making this money. The, for the music industry, the music industry is doing fine and a lot of uh, people remain here and do what they have to do. What I basically think the challenge is an clean environment. If the government can find a way to, like we have issues of rights, we have issues, you know, when you want to do anything in Nigeria, you have to almost provide everything by yourself. You, even if you pay tax, even when you pay for the light, you don't seem to get it. There's a new development for the light issue as regards to the band A, B, and C, which I think is a welcome development, but they can sustain this. 
it helps you to understand to want to stay. A lot of industries are also leaving the country because of some lack of food, a lot of amenities, including insecurity and all of that. So um, I don't. I try to encourage people, like I said, not to leave. But if you have to, for good reasons, then go ahead. But the Nigerian problems will be solved by we Nigerians. As for me, for example, I don't have any intention of leaving the country. Well, well, well honourable, uh, well, yes, honourable. Let's let's talk about um, the 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 concept behind tech guys or some tech guys being wrongly labeled as yahoo boys or internet firsters uh, where you have people who are genuinely working and because they are tech savvy they get wrongly labeled they get harassed by the police they get arrested some even get killed in the process how do we create a balance where there can be a clear cut line between who, people who are in tech legitimately and people who are using tech you know for fraudulent activities well um the, for the, this is this is a this is a major problem yeah you just raised a very tangible point you see um it, the efcc the nigerian police they keep harassing these guys in as much as i encourage them to do their job and try to sanitize the the tech world because of course we all know the menace, the bad name they are creating for the country. But I think um, there should be a better approach than just bumping to people, harassing people. This, uh, I am sure for one, for one thing, the EFCC, their tech department, they are so trained that when they see the guys that are doing illegitimate business, they know how to scrutinize them, go through their systems, and all that. But I think it's the standard. They should have to be a one around or search warrants and all of that. You don't just bump into people. But creating a line between knowing those that are legit and those that are not legit, it's 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 kind of difficult. It's kind of difficult if I must tell if I, if I must say because um the IT world is so is so vast that uh, people that are doing that do legitimate stuff cannot be pointed facially like seeing them or even interacting with them. You have to go through what they are doing via their system, their phones, and all of that. But I don't think it, does, it gives room for the um, for the security agencies to keep harassing them and all of that. But um, we, we're getting somewhere. That's all I can say. As well, a country, we're getting the there. wheels and progress in the works. Thank you, Honorable Ayodeji Mike Adebayo for gracing the program this morning. I must extend similar thanks to...